Super Rugby Round 7, the Saturday games. There's just the four this Saturday, so with three teams on the bye, it's a relatively short week. You could split two games on Friday, four games on Saturday, so an interesting mix. But you look at this, pretty much all of these teams except the Chiefs are either three wins, two losses, or two wins, three losses. So there's relative parity thus far in the competition. How long that's going to go kind of remains to be seen. You've got to feel like some of these teams are going to fall away. And others are going to pull ahead. So uh, teams like the Jaguars, the Reds, the Blues uh, could certainly use a good win to try and at least even up their records with some of the stronger teams. But if they lose, it's two steps back rather than the one. Uh, we will start with the first game, uh, which I'll be at. It is a Blues home game at Eden Park. So it's the Blues hosting the Stormers. Uh, as I've mentioned previously, the Stormers traditionally do not travel well, but if evidence based on last week's game is something to go by, the Stormers are perhaps slightly better at that than last year. Uh, last year it was their final game where they kind of came good a wee bit from memory, um, but I don't know, it's, it's, it's one game into their tour, so it's pretty much too early to tell uh, how good they are going to go. Uh, they have made a few changes, I'm not sure if that's going to make a difference, but yeah, the Blues are coming off a win against the New Zealand team, which they haven't done for a long time. So there should be a fair bit of feel-good factor around the Blues. But again, the Stormers aren't going to be down in the dumps from their uh, close loss last week. And uh, the travel factor should be out of their systems now that they've been in New Zealand for a week or more. So hopefully we're in for a pretty tight game. Uh, for the Blues, it's largely... The same team that played last week. I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I suppose the most uh, obvious change is Otere Black gets a start at number 10. Uh, his kicking stats are not fantastic, but they are certainly better than Harry Plummer's. So perhaps uh, the Blues are looking at this as a pretty close game, potentially. So uh, kicks a goal may be the difference. So they've put him in. Uh, also, they've kept... There are two All Blacks, Tui Nukuafe and Tuunga Fasi on the bench, which seems like a strange move, but from what Leon McDonald, the coach, was saying in the week, is that the role these guys play with the All Blacks is often as the kind of finishers, they come on as replacement props, so he kind of wants to continue them in that role, which is um, which is a role they seem to be well used to. So I know Tuunga, Tui Nukuafe started a few games, but this is what Leon McDonald was saying. Uh, also, Sonny Bill Williams is back. Uh, he's had a week off uh, helping out in Christchurch, but he is back this week, although he only starts from the bench. So uh, with Ma Nonu there, you got to think perhaps they do a swap around 50, 60 minutes, but I guess we'll see what kind of impact he can make. Otherwise, it's still those key guys who performed well last week, the likes of uh, Nanai, Riko Yuane, Fayane, these guys are all there. Uh, Tui Polotu and... Um, Papali'i both signed new contracts during the week as well. Papali'i is on the bench. Uh, Tui Pulotu gets a start. So yeah, it's a pretty stable lineup for them. Tom Robinson's been in good form. We'll see how he goes. Uh, the Stormers. Yeah, Benetzebeth is, is back in the squad this week after missing out last week kind of late. Uh, Damien Willem says at fullback, which is kind of a nice nice guy to have at fullback because he's a young guy full of potential. Good, good feet on him. Uh, SP Maria is relegated to the bench and although I am a fan of his after last week he kind of got burned a couple of times on the outside so perhaps it's good to have him uh, facing perhaps some more tired legs. Uh, Augustus has also moved to the bench so um, yeah there have been a few changes in the squad but it's largely settled. Um, Khaleesi is still there. Uh, Wukolo, Mbanambi and Kitsoff it's an all Springbok front row so they will certainly give the, the Blues a good challenge in that department it has the looks of a good game about it I'm pretty excited to be going to that one uh, the bookies have got the Blues by 5 points so picking it to be relatively close hopefully it is still hoping for a Blues win of course uh, the next one is an all Aussie affair uh, the Reds up against the Rebels. The Reds have actually picked up a couple of wins after a really poor start to the season. So they're two wins uh, and three losses. The Rebels have kind of had the opposite in fortunes happen. They they flew out with three wins in a row, but their tour of South Africa didn't go that well. Uh, two losses 
And they are coming back from South Africa to play a game immediately, so there's no rest for them. So I guess the travel factor could kind of be taken into account for this one uh, towards the end of the game, especially if it's hot, uh, like it was last week in Queensland. There may be a few uh, heavy legs amongst those Rebels players towards the end of the game. Although that being said, uh, the Rebels rested a lot of their Wallabies last week and they've brought them back for this game. So perhaps those guys are going to be fresh kind of no matter what. Uh, the Reds, kind of like the Blues, have taken a, a similar ain't broke, don't fix it attitude because they've made very minimal changes. JP Smith and twin brother Ron Smith are starting in the, the propping ranks. So uh, last week's starting props are both are both out of the lineup, although Tupo is still on the bench. But uh, yeah, you look at that Reds lineup, it's pretty similar. Angus Scott Young didn't, um, well, he's cleared to play basically after that incident in that last game. Uh, Karevi's still there. He's been in good form. Fair White has been in very good form, so he's still there. Um, actually, Tupo's probably one of the more disappointing guys of the season thus far for the Reds. He's one of their bigger names, but he hasn't really uh, punched with the same weight as some of his kind of lesser uh, known counterparts. But Tate McDermott was good last week. Likewise, was Higgity. He found his kicking form, which was good. So they may give the, the Rebels a good run for their money at home. The Rebels, like I said, these key guys they've brought back. Nasserani's back, Guinea's back, Coleman's back, Karabidi's back. Uh, Jack Maddox moves back to the wing, and Reese Hodge fills in at fullback. So there's a lot of Wallabies in the starting team. It's that uh, Guinea-Cooper combination again. Luke Jones has been really good. He's in there at number six. So uh, the Reds, I think, will be pretty mad, or at least not satisfied with their tour of South Africa. So they... They need to get back uh, into winning ways to really push ahead in that Aussie conference. Otherwise, potentially the Waratahs uh, are going to kind of fill that void. It's still anyone's game at the moment. But um, yeah, the Reds aren't just going to roll over because they are, with two wins and three losses, kind of back into things. Um, the Bookies have got the Rebels, but only by a solitary point. So pretty even stuff. Also, there's a lot of talk about how this is the kind of Guinea and Cooper return to Brisbane. Because, obviously, Brad Thorne was the man who didn't really want either of those guys. So, yeah, there might be a bit of fireworks if there's a bit of bad blood. Uh, I know one of the uh, Reds assistant coaches kind of dismissed it as saying he couldn't give a rat's about the return of Guinea and Cooper, but it'll be uh, a good one to see what kind of reception they get. I'm sure the fans still have a lot of appreciation for what they did at um, their time with the Reds, but Thorn perhaps not so fussed. So yeah, uh, that one is kind of a must watch just for that added bit of drama. Uh, the next one is the Sharks and the Bulls. Equal records with three wins and two losses. Uh, both teams are kind of getting into that Jekyll and Hyde state where you're not sure where they're at because the Sharks have had some good wins and some good losses. The Bulls have had some very good wins and last week an appalling loss. So yeah, the, the pressure is kind of on both teams. I suppose it is slightly more on the Sharks insofar as they're at home. But equally, I think with the Bulls getting an absolute shellacking from, uh, from the Chiefs last week, there is a need for them to kind of turn up and uh, convince us all that they're still a playoff team. All the South African teams are still in the playoff spots on the table at the moment, so it has been a good start to the season for uh, for the South African teams. It's kind of previously been that the Lions would way pull ahead and be flying that South African flag high, and then the other ones would be kind of mid-table or towards the bottom. But now you've got no team that's really streaking away with it, but a lot of good teams, so... Kind of like the Aussie Conference as well. I mean, all the news conferences are kind of the same at the moment. There's not that one team standing up in New Zealand. It's kind of the Crusaders and the Hurricanes. But uh, yeah, so much the same as that Crusaders-Hurricanes game tonight. It's that Sharks-Bulls game tomorrow to see um, yeah, which one goes ahead and which one falls back that step. The Sharks, again, kind of minimal changes from a team that really played well last week. Uh, Mvovo is on the wing this week, which is a change from last week. Um... Also, Luke Stringer is in at number six, but for the most part, again, it's the same. Another all Springbok front row with Oosthuizen, uh, Van der Merwe, and the Beast, uh, Tendai and Tamawira. 
Um, Hyron Andrews has been in good form. He's in the second row. Uh, Dan Dupree has been in good form. He's at number eight. Ro his brother Rob's still at number 10. So Mpimpi's been in good form. Um, uh, and Esther Hazen retained that kind of combo. So it has been a settled uh, lineup for the Sharks, which is good. They just get, need to get some consistency in their perfor performances. Uh, for the Bulls, there's also a few changes. So Liebenberg moves from the second row out to number seven. Papia is in for fun sale at number nine, which is um, probably a lot of people's preferred option. But uh, I guess maybe that indicates that the Bulls are going to run the ball a bit more. Uh, Snayman, as Eli Snayman, is in at number five. But um, yeah, overall, it's still very steady looking squad for the uh, the Bulls as well from last week. Odendal and Creel are still at 12 and 13. And Odendal got a fair bit of grief last week uh, after that loss. We'll see if he's able to step up. Pollard's still captain at 10. Uh, and you can't have Brits and Gaboka. So, yeah, Jason Jenkins, second row. This one's got a pretty pretty tight-looking uh, read about it as well. The Sharks are favorites by three. So, again, pretty minimal in terms of these, these margins, which is a nice change for Super Rugby because too often it's been... You can kind of pick one team by 15, 20 points, but all of these games look to be look to be tight uh, I'm sure at least one of them will blow out but in terms of the uh, the bookies predictions uh, it's all relatively stable and the last one is the Jaguars who've had the week off uh, they are hosting the Chiefs who finally got their first win and they got it in pretty good style uh, the Jaguars <clears throat> are another team who you kind of not not certain how they're going to go uh, they did have two losses in South Africa, kind of the same as the Rebels did, so it's not a happy hunting ground for them either. But at home, they are usually much better. They performed really well there against the Bulls. And uh, yeah, the Chiefs coming to town is an interesting clash of a team which has been on the bottom and coming up, and a team which is, I guess, having a rest, but also hasn't won for, for a wee while now, because two losses and a bye, uh, that winning feeling still needs to return to Buenos Aires, so... Uh, for the Jaguars, Vivos, Montoya, and Medrano in the front row. Solid. Petty and Lavanini in the second row. That's kind of consistent. Lazana, Crema, and Ortega Desio in the back row. So that means Pablo Matera uh, is relegated to the bench. De La Fuente is still captains at 12. So they've shifted the captaincy around a wee bit over the last couple of years. Have the Jaguars. Uh, Bonija is still in at 10. He has... I feel like been getting better as the season's gone by now that he is the number one guy in the place of Nico Sanchez. He did look a bit kind of iffy in the opening round, but settling in. Uh, Kubeli is the preferred option at nine. They certainly rotate that around a bit as well. Uh, for the Chiefs, they've made a few changes. So Leonard Brown starts at number 12. So Nankovil, after getting those two tries, is, is not uh, needed in the starting lineup. He's on the bench. DMAC continues at 10, not 10, 15. Uh, yeah, so no 10 jersey for him, but his brother Marty gets the spot this week ahead of Debrasini. Uh, I believe, was Debrasini injured? I can't remember. Uh, Allardyce is in for Retallic, who is, I guess if you are a, um, a Jaguars fan, you'd be pretty happy because Big Brody, uh, is not in the lineup. Um... Totoira Tohururangi is also not in the starting side. It's still Brad Weber. Um, but yeah, the guys like Salomon Alamalo, Sean Wainui, these guys are all there and they've been uh, good as of last week. But um, yeah, Chiefs by two is what the bookies are saying. So people are not core, not kind of convinced about the Chiefs yet. I guess that one win was perhaps the Dragon Awakening, but none of us can really be sure until they can string a series of results together. In the reverse fixture last year in Hamilton, the Jaguars got the win, so the Chiefs will be kind of looking to return that favor uh, this week. So yeah, just the four games. How do you guys think they're going to go? Uh, how do you think my Blues are going to go against the Stormers? Can you see them winning two games in a row? If you're a Blues fan, that's a pretty seldom seen thing in recent years. Reds, Rebels should have a bit of fire about it. Uh, Sharks, Bulls, all, all South African affair also should be pretty uh, pretty hectic. I mean, Sio Khaleesi was on New Zealand TV this week just talking about how much harder those uh, those derby games are. So this will no doubt be another testament to that. And the Jaguars Chiefs, 
both sides that could really use a win. You guys let me know your thoughts and I will, um, I'm going to go make my super bird pricks now. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.